this some sort of Easter sorcery? What? This is no magic, my lord. This is a miracle. A miracle? So Van Zeeks has figured it out, has he? Also explain this extraordinary coincidence at once. Yes, my lord, the crucial point we have to ask ourselves here is when did the fragment of metal find its way inside Mr. Garadep's pipe? Something that was terrified for us in the most recent witness testimony. And the thing in my hand as usual at the time of the onslaught knocked it clean out with one of her soft projectiles. See, she did, yes. It would never have been sent flying unless it was hit by something pretty solid. Oh, dearie me! During the argument between these two that occurred just as the victim was on the pavement below, Mrs. Garridan flung this knife at her husband. However, the knife missed Mr. Garridan instead striking the pipe in his hand at a time. Which caused the tip to break off, of course. Good lord! Yes, and that is when the tiny tip of the blade found its way inside Mr. Garridep's pipe. The, the chances of that are a million to one! And yet there's no other credible explanation for how the tip of the blade ended in up in your pipe. Then, after losing its tip, the knife ricocheted... Um, ricocheted... Um, ricocheted... <laughs> oh shoot! Wait, how do I pronounce this? Uh... Rico, Rico, uh, so so the noun is called ricochet, right? Um, um, so it should be re ricocheted. <laughs> ricochet. It, the verb is the, the verb to ricochet, right? Ricochet. So how do you pronounce the past form of this verb? Ricocheted. <laughs> okay. The, the knife ricocheted. No, that sounds so wrong. Off the pipe and flew out of the open window. Ah. Oh. In short, this knife, which fell from the window of the Garadep's house, is the very same knife that struck the victim in the middle of the back on the street below. Oh gosh, oh dear! Oh no! <laughs> She's standing on a box! Uh. What now? A four-body theory, I'll give you that. A complex bouquet of seemingly trivial points, plausibly arranged to create an almost passable vintage. Allow me to toast my learned friend's characteristically Nipponese approach to bottling his argument. Sorry? But after all, it is just a theory. The bottle I fear is corked. Because you see... Oh, whoa! It's spoiled by an insurmountable inconsistency. Pray do tell what it is. An insurmountable what? Lord Marzik, explain yourself. What is this inconsistency you claim to have identified? An inconsistency of the simplest nature, my lord. The victim was found with a knife planted in the middle of her back. Yes, in her... Ah. Uh. Oh, oh my god. That's right, you silly little man. No, do I don't think. What are you getting so excited about? Let us consider the basic facts of the case once more. The victim was walking along the pavement before being stabbed in the bag and falling to the ground. If the knife that struck her had fallen from above... There's no possible way it could have planted itself into the victim's back. 
There is, there is. Maybe the book, The Lion's Pride, fell down onto the pavement below, and then the woman saw it and then tries to pick it up, right? And then she must have, like, hmm, um, how do you say it? <laughs> she must have, like, had her back up, right? When she bent down to pick up the book, right? And that's when the that's that's when the knife fell from above as well into her back. Yeah, yeah. I think that's it, right? That must be it. Order, order. Fine, right? You see, that's exactly right. If the knife had fallen from on her from above, it would have struck her on the top of her head. Well, uh... <laughs> it's not for us. Look. Uh, I knew it. I never liked this theory in the first place. Hmm, it would appear the defense has made rather a spectacular blunder. If a theory has even one inconsistency, it cannot stand. Your theory, my learned friend, is history. No, it's not. It's not. I can do it. We were so close. I could see the truth. I was so sure we were on the right track. But now the way has been blocked completely. But just one simple inconsistency. Or in other words... We simply need to eliminate that one inconsistency and the theory will stand. Mr. Sato. You mustn't worry, Mr. Naruhodo. You were just caught off guard, that's all. And your mind went blank. But if the path you were on is indeed correct, then a way will present itself. The key to this is in the court record, I'm sure. All the information you need is there. It seems you have nothing to say, my Nipponese friend. Well, your silence speak volumes. A tacit acceptance that your theory is fatally flawed. Objection! This inconsistency doesn't mean I was on the wrong track. It means that I need to sharpen my mind and dig deeper for the truth. It's a test. Yes. If the knife fell on the victim from above, there's no way that it could have hit her on the in the middle of her back. Under normal circumstances, that is. What are you implying? Kozu? There is a piece of evidence in the court record that can explain this inconsistency. That can explain how the knife that fell from above could have pierced the victim's back. We already have the answer. A goodness! Utter, utter, utter madness! Surely this must be the last time. Counsel, present the evidence of which you speak. <sighs> this is the last inconsistency, the final piece in the puzzle. If I can successfully make sense of this, the truth will be laid bare at last. The evidence that explains how the falling knife became lodged in the victim's back is... It has to be the book, right? She bent down to pick up the book. That's why the book was in her hand. Or it could be this photograph. Am I thinking about this too much? Has to be the book. Take that! This, the fourth book found at the scene. This is the final piece of evidence the defense will present. The uh, burnt book. Is that not Mr. Gerudev's book? Yes, and to understand its significance, we have to consider how it came to be in the scene in the first place. This photographic print clearly shows the book in question, and the victim holding it in her hand. So maybe I could have presented this photograph as well. But as we, but as we all now know, it was the police constable that put the book between her fingers like that. Quite so, as part of his wholesale transplanting of the Huanxi to the opposite side of the road. 
That's true. However, as part of his testimony, Constable Beat made an extremely enlightening statement. But what made you place that book in the victim's hand? Ah, oh, well, sir, that's because that's how I found it. When we first ran over to the scene, the victim was already holding the book. So when I moved everything, I made sure it was still in her hand. In other words, the victim had already picked, a, picked the book up of her own volition. And clearly, it must have been before she suffered a knife wound. Oh, well, I should say so. After being attacked with a knife, I don't imagine she'd be able to do that, do much of anything. So the question becomes, why did the victim have that book in her hand? By, by Jingo! I, I think I'm beginning to see what may have happened now. Oh dear me! We know that a book fell from the top floor on the of the Garadep household onto the pavement below. At precisely the moment that the victim was walking past. Yes, at exactly that moment, the young woman was walking along the street in a light fog, when all of a sudden the book fell right in front of her. The book I threw! Yes, Mrs. Garrida, and what do you think the woman did? What would you do if you were walking along and suddenly a book landed in front of you on the pavement? Well, I really can't imagine it, but I suppose uh, she might have reached down and picked the uh, and picked the book up. <laughs> <laughs> yes, that is exactly what the woman in fact did. She picked up the book. Oh, oh heavens! And when the woman reached down to pick the fallen book up. What position would her back have been in? That's right, facing the sky completely and utterly defenseless. <laughs> then... <laughs> this is so ridiculous, and I love it. Then in the very next moment, while the woman was still bent over picking up the book... So ridiculous. The next object fell from the room above, the jackknife, straight into the middle of her back. And at that time and at that same time, walking by chance directly behind Miss Green. Was the defendant, Mr. Sosaki Natsume? Well, I never It appeared to Mr. Natsume that the woman simply collapsed on the floor. In the dark and the fog, he didn't see the knife falling on her from above. Oh! And from the other direction, the constable and his wife saw no one but the victim and her apparent attacker. So there never was a real culprit to run from the scene in the first place. No, this was nothing more than a series of unlikely events that culminated in an unfortunate accident. And that is the real truth behind this case. Whoa, I love how the music like picked up the pace and like um, crescendoed into, uh, into the silence. This is amazing. Well, Mr. and Mrs. Garadab, The very first time you showed me that knife, I, I had my suspicions. I wondered if perhaps it might have been something like that. There, there, old Bean. Poor Mrs. Garadab. Mm, of course, I never meant for anything of this sort to happen, but it was all my fault, wasn't it? I take full responsibility. I let my anger get the better of me. I threw that book. And I threw the knife as well. John, dear? It's alright, I know. 
Ah, oh, I'm I'm ever so sorry. Truly, I'm sorry. And he has picked her up, of course. Oh, in reference to that time where Mr. Garrodan, uh, Mrs. Garrodan picked up Mr. Garrodan. But somehow he has not the strength to pick up his wife anymore. Like in that photograph we saw in his room. The wedding photograph. Lord Vazix, what news of Mrs. Garuda? She's been taken to the infirmary. It would appear that today's events had left her in an especially flustered state. However, I believe she will recover in due course. There's no cause for concern. Yes, and we also themselves, they caused what could easily have been a terrible tragedy. They shall have to prepare themselves for the consequences of their actions. There is some good news, however, my lord. I have just had word from the hospital where the victim is being treated. Her condition is improving steadily, and the doctor believes she will regain consciousness soon. It's strange, we've been talking about the victim all this time, but we've never once met her. How wonderful! The woman is out of danger, it seems. Yes, that is good news. So, Mr. Sose Hinatsume? Oh, I forgot his voice. Ah, uh, uh, yes? On behalf of my fellow countrymen, I would like to take this opportunity to beg your pardon, sir. You came from your distant eastern homeland to study our great British culture and have been repaid with immeasurable unkindness. Please accept our heartfelt apologies. No, it is me. Who should be begging for your pardon? Uh, oh no, Mr. Natsume. That evening, uh, when the young woman just collapsed on the pavement before my eyes, I, I jumped to the wrong conclusion again in my confusion. What conclusion, sir? Oh, I was sure that the woman was dead. Yes, Constable Beat said the same thing, didn't he? He thought she had been killed too. I suppose she must have looked completely lifeless. It's been about a year since I arrived in Great Britain now, but I still can't get used to life here. I, I can't relax. I'm sure there are evil spirits lurking in the fog, like they're haunting me. Oh yeah, his haunted, like, apartment. We still don't know what the heck is that about. Poor Sosuki-san, his imagination really has got the better of him. Yes, poor man. So when it happened, oh, I thought the young woman had been taken by the fox spirits. I should never have dropped my books like that and run away. Now I should have called for help, for a doctor, for the police. Yes, you should have. Instead, I've managed to create a rift in the relationship of trust between our two empires. And for that, I am truly sorry. Wow. One could indeed say that some sort of mischievous spirit has been at work here, I think. One that created a chain of unfortunate mishaps. We were befooled by the spirit and led to false conclusions. But thanks to Lord Van Seeks and our young lawyer here from the East, that chain has now been broken and the spirit exercised. I heartily commend you both. Oh. He doesn't say anything. I don't think he's, like... Satisfied. Now then, ladies and gentlemen of the jury. Yes, my lord. In concluding this trial, I must ask one last time for your decisions regarding the defendant's culpability. Are you ready to present your findings to the court? As the foreman of this jury, I can assure you we've reached a fair and just conclusion. I do declare the truth can be extremely cruel at times. Well, uh, I didn't suspect the woman next to me, that's for sure. This is aim for the old bean whilst she's out of action, you know, but I know what her decision would be. Now, just may not finally be able to get out of the ice and walk while it's about time. I say, I have a cork of a story to tell the grandchildren when I get home, won't I? 
Very well, ladies and gentlemen of the jury, I hereby demand your final decisions. Mr. Foreman? Not guilty. Not guilty. Not guilty. Not guilty. Not guilty. Not guilty. That was so wholesome at the end. They all apologize and stuff like that. Ah, oh. what a heartfelt moment. Very well, Mr. Sosa Kinasume, I hereby pronounce you not guilty. Hey, confetti! Oh, I did like the sakura blossoms, though. And finally, Mr. Natsume. Oh, yes, yes, Lord, sir. You are now a free man once more. It is my hope that you will continue to further your education in British culture. And may you never again be brought before me. Oh, oh yes, sir, of course. Oh, my life. I swear I'll never set a foot in the courtroom again. I'm just for two tears. Okay, you can't make that promise, honestly. That's not a promise you can make. Thank you, Kauzus. Court is adjourned. Oh, hello, come. Wait, you, you mean me? Of course! Is there another locum here? Is there even one? <laughs> what is a locum? Can I... can I... Uh, look it up? What the heck is a locum? I, I, I'm just thinking of a locust and I'm sure that's not what he means. Locum is a representative. Okay. A representative? Oh, like I'm representing him? Is, is that it? Compared to the original locum student, Mr. Narohodo Esquire, your name has become rather short, hasn't it? What's wrong with using my actual name? Oh, at last! I'm free, I'm free! Joyful, joyous, jubilant, jubilation! Ready, hearty, happiness, hooray! Hurrah! Oh, I am so pleased. Mr. Natsume is delighted. Would it be so hard just to say that then? Look, oh, you did it! You saved me from the brink! Well, what happened to the poor woman was in no way your fault, after all. I'm just glad everyone can see that now. No, 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 not that! Lawyer, lawyer, local lawyer! Uh, yes? I mean, uh, I mean as, as, as I said before, I have just never got used to life here in Great Britain. Every time I look over my shoulder, I see foreigners, I see towering brick buildings, and from high up windows, I see them looking down on me, laughing. Look at that little hunchback! Oh dear, I'm sure it's all in your head, Mr. Natsume. But today, you look on my gave me my gloom the boot. You stood from behind that baronial bench. Before all those babbling British, you battled to the bitter end, laying bare the baffling truth. And when I beheld the blinding fireworks among the beams of the Bailey's roof, I bellowed. Oh, the literations I see. Behold, the best barrister I ever born! Well, that's very flattering, and we're very pleased for you. This has given me a wonderful anecdote to recount to my old friends back in Japan. An, an anecdote? Is that what's to become of all my hard work? Ah, there you are, my dear fellows. I apologize for keeping you waiting. I rose late this morning. Ah, oh, Mr. Sholmes, what a pleasure to see you. I see I am here not a moment too soon. A disaster has been averted, I'm glad to say. Oh. The trial shall begin presently, Mr. Narodo, and I wish you the very best of luck. <laughs> You're way too late for that. It's just finished. What? No! Then my haste was in vain. Uh, it's... it's... it's you! Uh, Lock Sholmes! Oh, have you met, sir? <laughs> oh, uh, this is Mr. Natsume, the man you had arrested, Mr. Sholmes. 
Ah, I see. I fail to recognize you at first. Our previous encounters have taken place in the gloom, either of your bleak lodgings or that prison cell. I simply couldn't place that curious face. In the light. Right. Charming. This is all your fault, Herr Lock Holmes. You're the reason I had to go through this terrible ordeal. Oh, I, d I think you're being a little bit unfair here. But I'm going to give you a piece of my mind. My apologies, sir, but I assure you I have placed you now. You are the fellow who abandoned that poor young lady and ran off, are you not? <laughs> oh. Had she been taken to hospital more urgently? I fear perhaps she would have regained consciousness by now. Oh! But it was unavoidable, I'm sure. We are but human after all. Anyone would have been shaken by such an experience. I... I do feel very badly about how I behaved. Well, never mind. Now then, what was it that you wanted to say to me, sir? Nothing. <laughs> priceless. Oh, I am sorry, really, but... That was quite priceless. Poor Sosiki-san. Still, on the bright side, you've had an extremely entertaining experience without paying a penny. And it would seem you were not even found guilty. But there is no bright side. There's no bright side? Whatever do you mean, Mr. Natsume? Then after this, I'm... I'm so cursed by the spirits and... And now by the Reaper! Ah, Lord Van Zeeks. I haven't forgotten, you know, what facing that man in court means. Even if you're found not guilty, you're still doomed. It... it, it will all be alright. Oh. Uh, wait, is he talking about himself in third person? It will be alright, Mr. Natsume. Hmm? If the Reaper... Oh, wait, no, that was... Susato, okay, I, I'm confusing Susato with Sosaki now. It will be alright, Natsume-san. Uh, if the Reaper appears trying to make trouble, I will protect you. Hiya! Why did you have to throw me? With a perfectly executed Susato takedown. Much as I like being turned on my head, a bit of warning might be nice next time, Mr. Sato. So, Mr. Natsume, what do you intend to do now? You mentioned something about recounting your experiences, experiences to your friends back in Japan. Yes, I, I intend to return to my homeland soon. Oh. It has already been a year since I arrived here in Great Britain. I have visited universities, libraries, bookshops. I've been honored with the tutelage of pr professors. I've learned so much about the wealth of literature here and the city it has shaped. And I've come to realize that it is my calling to see a home and tell my fellow countrymen about it. That's very touching, Mr. Natsume. Or, oh, in perhaps less veiled terms, you wish to withdraw halfway around the world to escape the terror of the Reaper's curse. I was just saying, that's a clever way to escape the curse of the Reaper. That's not it at all! The more I learn of literature, the more this strange feeling claws at my insides. I feel compelled to return to my roots and attempt to pen it a work of my own. Oh, I see. A work of literature by Soseki-san. Could be an interesting read. Not that I read any books. And what about Mr. Sato and yourself, Mr. Naruhodo? Sorry, what about us? Will you return to Japan alongside your moustached compatriot? Why would we? A week has not yet passed since we arrived in London. And only now does it feel as though we have finally found our feet. And you are accommodated in a hotel at present, are you not? That's right, but we need to find lodgings before it bankrupts us. I've calculated we can only afford another ten nights before our entire budget is exhausted. Well then, uh, you could take my lodgings. 
Oh, the windowless room? No, thank you. <laughs> oh, but wooden next to windows more than makes up for with a floor, a ceiling, and walls. And a uh, spirit, uh, a cursed spirit or something. Great. And of course, I'd be happy to be behind the cursed evil spirit. <laughs> oh my, an evil spirit? Uh huh, oh yes. It tries to suffocate you while you sleep. It's. it's. an infallible wake up call. Wait, could it be. the cat? We'll think about it if that's alright. Perhaps I can offer a more welcome alternative. Would you consider taking lodgings with me? Oh yes! Really? Well, a vacancy has conveniently presented itself. Though it is up in the attic, I might add. Are you sure it isn't just a storage loft? I spoke with the landlady this very morning on a matter of price, and Iris is cleaning the room as we speak. You must come at once. I presume you have no luggage to speak of. Oh, this is simply wonderful. What an honor to be invited to take lodgings in the great detective's office's attic. I am... I'm too overcome for words. So it's interesting we look elsewhere is out then. <laughs> then it's settled. Iris will prepare a welcome dinner this evening. And you must come too, Mr. Natsume. I insist. I... 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 I don't know what to say, uh, but thank you, and yes. Wonderful. Then I'll go and complete the paperwork for your formal release, Mr. Natsume. It shan't take long. Somebody's happy. Look, um, I, I knew that you wouldn't let me down. I'm truly delighted to have met you here in London. Likewise, Mr. Natsume. It's been a privilege meeting you too. It's a shame that we're going to have to say goodbye so soon. Well, I've come to realize that I belong in Japan. But look, um, we'll meet again one day. Yes, I'm sure. And hopefully by then, I'll be a successful lawyer. Hopefully by then, I'll be a successful author. Well, my dear fellow, our carriage appears to have arrived. Shall we go, Mr. Naruhodo? Yes, Mr. Sholmes. I have little doubt Mr. Natsume will be released in time for dinner this evening. Nice. And so, with Sosaki-san's innocence successfully established, we rode with Mr. Sholmes to what was to become our new home, 221B Baker Street. So this is to be our new office, yes. Our office? I rather like the sound of that. Me too, it's simply wonderful, isn't it? I hope you can see this, Kazuma. It's only a small step, but I'd like to think we're getting a little closer to your dream now. So my dear fellows, do you like this place? Oh, wow! Mr. Sholmes, wow, you look... You look fantastic! Uh, thank you so much. It's a delightful room, Mr. Sholmes. I simply adore it. Good, I'm pleased to hear it. Iris and I are delighted to welcome you. I hope everyone's hungry. It's nearly time for dinner. Oh, we'll eat as soon as Mr. Natsume arrives. We have a lot to celebrate. Iris... You must let me help you. All right then, Susie. You can be in charge of the salad. Splendid. So, Mr. Naruhodo, how does it feel? To have your own office in the capital? It's very exciting, actually. I can't help wondering what adventures awaits us. <laughs> Those were precisely my sentiments when I first established my office at these premises. 
Until I discover the dark truth about the city of London, that is. Uh, sorry? London is a glorious place full of wonder, opportunity, prosperity, and mirth. But the brightest of lights casts the darkest of shadows. Shadows? What do you mean? Well, I believe you're well aware of the murkiness that lies behind London's facade already. So once again, Mr. Naruhodo, Welcome to London. That sounded very ominous. Of course, at the time. I had no idea of the significance of those words Mr. Shom so casually spoke. But it wasn't long before my turn came. To lift the facade and see the true depth of the murk that lay behind it.